Hello everybody and welcome back to another Coaster Cheetah video and in this video I'll be doing a coaster review for Mako at SeaWorld Orlando which is now my favorite B&M hyper coaster that I've gone on and it is just a very good ride spectacular I would even say and if you haven't ridden this coaster I like me honestly would probably underestimate this ride because I loved Canemonium when I rode that, and I thought for the longest time until I just rode Mako recently that there is no way that Mako would beat out Canemonium. However, I have to say that it does. Uh, despite the mid-course brake run, Mako is just such an incredible ride between the atmosphere and the flagector airtime you get on this ride, and the back row is crazy. And I'm going to be talking about it all in this video. So you will ascend your 200 foot lift hill and drop down your 200 feet right into your uh, little pond area, the lagoon, and it's very awesome uh, how Kraken and Mako take place over this uh, lagoon here. And then you have right away a turnaround, however this goes up as if it's going to be an airtime hill, and then you sharply twist to the left. I actually do like this because it does get, give some airtime, and it's just a funky and pretty like snappy um, maneuver, and I just really enjoy it. And then you go into your uh, biggest airtime hill, and this thing is awesome, a great dose of flagector airtime in the back and float air time in the in the front it is just insane um actually how much air time you get and how strong it is because usually for bnm hypers they have um weak to strong floater air time but this is like strong floater to strong flagector on this ride and it is very cool then you go into your turnaround so you start going to the left and then you snap to the right it's basically just a standard B&M turnaround, but I still do enjoy it. And even though, I mean, I would prefer a treble clef with, or I mean, which I think would be awesome here. But anyway, then you have a smaller airtime hill, and this one is trimmed. However, you don't really feel it very much. I mean, of course, it's not going to be as strong airtime, but still pretty decent. Then you go into another airtime hill, a little bit smaller in this one. When you are descending, it will snap to the right and you'll twist it down into kind of like a swooping drop, then you'll have one of the best points of the whole ride, which is the speed hill. This thing, I love this on B&M Hypers. I'm so glad that they're integrating it into their newer Hypers, like on Canemonium also. I mean, it's just spectacular. I do love it, and I hope that it is at least, like, I mean, I'm glad that Orion has one too, because they're just such fun elements on coasters. And then after this, you will rise up into your mid-course break run, which I know is a bummer, but at least, you know, I mean, I feel like it is kind of needed on this ride because of the section that follows. Then you will drop off the mid-course, which isn't as good. At, I mean, it's still good. However, it does twist, which is kind of, you know, it doesn't give as much airtime if it was just a normal straight drop, but that's fine. Then after this, the basically the next section of the ride, so you'll twist down, then twist the opposite way, and you'll go over the path, over the lagoon, and back up into Mako Station on the brake run. So basically, you're just passing around and interacting with the park, which I think is actually really amazing. And I mean, it is really awesome when you're walking through the park, not only just seeing the track, but if the coaster actually swoops above you, it's just really awesome. So now we're done with the layout, and I mean, this layout is spectacular, and that is one of my main likes for this ride. It is It has such a great layout, and I really think that it deserves all the praise it gets, because it's definitely, I mean, the flowjector airtime is crazy on this ride. Again, one of my favorite points of this whole ride is the speed hill. The drop is great, too, in the back row, and me saying back row all this time I mean, it is pretty obvious at this point that I do enjoy the back row more than the front in this ride, which isn't my opinion for most rides, because I love seeing the views up front. However, in this ride, I mean, don't get, don't get me wrong, the, the front row is still great. However, the back row takes it up to another level. I mean, it actually kind of makes it a little bit intense. And I mean, yeah, I, I just really love this ride. Then for the pacing... I mean, it actually does have fairly good pacing until the mid-course. Of course, it does, you know, trim it down. However, it's still, I mean, it's not like it crawls. It totally crawls back. I wouldn't say that or anything, but it definitely, I mean, after the mid-course, you have to expect that it will lose speed. So, I mean, the pacing, I, I think it's actually pretty good on this ride. 
And, I mean, yeah, the whole atmosphere is also a big uh, win for me on this ride because, first of all, the coaster looks awesome, even going up to the park. And, I mean, before riding it, the structure looks awesome. I love the color scheme on this ride. The purple and the blue are really good together. And then you will actually be above water and near water almost the entire time while you're on this ride. And I also really love going above the path and above the shops and stuff. Another huge win for me on this ride is the restraints and the trains. The trains don't only look awesome, but they also feel awesome. Um, the seats are great and the restraints are incredible. Clamshell restraints from B&M are probably one like top three best restraints of all time. However, unfortunately, most of, most of them are plagued with seat belts. However, Mako is not a victim of this and... Yeah, it is really nice to uh, not have a seatbelt on this ride. I know that was a small complaint of mine on Candemonium, and I'm glad that this one fixes it. So this ride is just, I mean, I adore it. I really think that this is one of the best coasters that B&M has ever done, and I don't think a lot of people would argue against that. I hope to one day ride Shambhala and see what I think of that and see if it truly is better than Mako. However, yeah, I mean, currently, I don't think it's going to change very soon that Mako is my favorite B&M Hyper. So oh, my yeah. personal score, I'm going to give this ride a 9.5 out of 10. The only thing it lacks for me, which I mean, it's pretty standard on B&M's uh, B&M Hypers, is that I think it could have been a little more intense because <clears throat> it really isn't for me. I think Goliath at Over Georgia you know, Raging Bull, they are kind of more on the intense side, and I know that's not what these coasters are meant for. However, I just would have preferred a little intensity. Plus, um, of course, you know, I mean, there is just better coasters out there that I would give, I would rather give a 10 to, so that is why. But yeah, 9.5, it definitely deserves, and that is still a great score for this ride. Yeah. Tell me in the comments down below what you think of Mako. If you agree with what I said or not, also comment, or I mean, also, if you did enjoy, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.